Peter Buswell, and the discussion today is on the concept of estimated wait time or position in queue. So I'm going to walk you through how I do that. I've got a couple of other clips on UCCX scripting that uh, talk about some of the uh, programming concepts that uh, I've adopted and that I would encourage you to take a look at. Uh, so I want to want you to be familiar with the conventions and strategies that I use here. One of the strategies is portability. If you're going to take the time to write a script, and you're going to call center, it's probably going to have a dozen scripts. You want to make your scripts such that they can be portable and used uh, to solve other problems. So some of the uh, uh, conventions that I use uh, regularly are first the concept of uh, capturing the DNS. I like to capture DNS, the number of the caller dialed, and use that to index my XML database. And the reason for this is that we can use XML to pull in a whole bunch of variables uh, that can read the behind the script. So uh, everything, for example, the schedule, you want to pull in a schedule for this uh, script that may in fact be different than uh, the schedule used in the same script running in a different CSQ. Things like, do I want to play the estimated wait time or play the position in queue? Uh, even, the, even the name of the menu, you can actually, uh, most folks want to hard code the menu right in the script. Why not call a subflow uh, that uh, uh, pulls in the required menu? And this way, you, you get very portable uh, code. And I think this is, you know, if you come from a software development background, if you're a programmer, these things are uh, second nature to you. If you're a VoIP engineer learning scripting, um, these may be new to you. So I just would encourage you to explore them. Everybody does what's uh, best for them. Uh, the other uh, conventions that I use is I like to create, these are booleans, right? Play, position, and crew, yes or no. Play menu name. Uh, play wait time, yes or no. Uh, and they're retrieved from an XML file. So the string DNS is the uh, index to an XML file to pull back a whole bunch of variables through XPath and XML that help me figure out whether I'm supposed to play the wait time or not. Okay. Some of the other things that we do is early on in your script, you want to uh, set up your exception handling, right? And you want to make sure that uh, you take the time as often as possible in your script. So, you know, start, accept, delay, get the contact information, set the time that the call arrived in the script. You might find that useful later if you want to uh, indicate to the agent on their display how long this caller waited in queue, right? Here's your uh, on exception handling. If we run into a problem, what should we do? But here's what I want to point out. Set the string DNS uh, equal to the string calling number. Use this uh, as the index uh, to an XML file that you'll go read in uh, to get some of the other variables defined. And last, I would put in a word for defining your variable names in a way that makes it a little easier to read your scripts. So when you're reading through a script and you're trying to figure out, is this a, a string? Is it an integer? Was it a Boolean value? It's helpful if you make your names, and, and I just uh, adopted the convention of, you know, if it's st string, I, I put str, uh, bool, PRMT to indicate it's a prompt and so forth. It's just uh, just a practice. Consider it, adopt it if it makes sense to you. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. Um, the next issue in the play uh, uh, estimated wait time it is that um, it requires uh, a, a, a subflow and it requires uh, using the um, get reporting statistics. So the system knows how long it is. It's, it's not a big secret. You can 
get the estimated wait time by get the reporting statistics, and you can even get the position in queue uh, by checking the reporting uh, statistics. And so the issue is how to get that information into a format that's uh, attractive to humans. So uh, we're going to call an estimated wait time subflow here uh, that will take the uh, seconds that we get from the get reporting statistics and convert it into uh, seconds, uh, minutes, and hours, and then can concatenate uh, some useful information to speak to the caller. The same strategy works for the get uh, time and queue. So uh, again, if we look at the get reporting statistics, uh, you'll see that there's a field called expected wait time. Let's uh, look for that in the CSQ that we're working with. And let's put the results in, the, in a variable called int, because it's an integer, estimated wait time in seconds. And you'll see that we're going to pass that information off. Do the same thing with the uh, um, position in Q. Basically, you'll get the reporting statistics um, for the CSQ you're working with. And then you'll save it in a value called uh, int, because it is an integer, uh, Q position. So in the estimated white time and Q position, there are some variables that you will need to create. So um, again, some of the uh, conventions I've adopted are, I like to create a value called bool, because it's a boolean, and its success is either true and false. Because when you're troubleshooting a script, you cannot uh, debug the subflow directly. So what I'd like to do is if I'm sending something over to a subflow, when the subflow runs, I want it to return a value called Boolean success out um, such that it's either true or false. This way I'll know if there is a problem with the subflow, or at least I'll have some indication of it. Uh, play position in queue. Uh, Boolean, as a typo there, Boolean play estimated wait time, uh, integer estimated wait time in seconds, integer Q position, the, the name of the Q we're working with, and a prompt value estimated wait time. You're going to need to create these. You're also going to need to create some prompts if you want the lady to say your position in Q is, you're going to have to record that wave file, okay? so. If you don't want to use the system generated prompts uh, for uh, the, the system provided integers of one, two, three, four, very mechanical, you'll have to record those. And if you want the voices to be the same as the rest of your script, you're going to have to use the same voice. Um, I have a library of prompts uh, that on the website that uh, uh, cover most of these instances. And I use them when I'm scripting so that I don't have to deal with waiting for other folks to get the recordings done. So the other thing, when we're passing a value from the main script to the subflow, it gets a little complex in figuring things out in terms of what came in and what goes out. So I put, you know, over here we're going to say the integer estimated wait time in seconds is going to be a variable which we pass to the subflow. And so I have a value in the subflow called estimated wait time in. It's this value here. I just want to be able to know it, so I give it an in. When we pass this out, or should we pass it out, I have a value called estimated wait time in seconds out. And this way we can separate the stuff that's into our subflow from the stuff that's coming out of our subflow. So these are some of the conventions and, and uh, strategies I have found effective. If you find them effective, use them. If not, it's okay. My feelings won't be hurt. Estimated wait time and position in queue. So as I told you, in the preceding um, explanation of how this group puts together, there are uh, two key components. So I'm going to show you that. There's clearly this uh, estimated wait time, which as you will see, uh, if the wait time, I set a, a Boolean value called play position in queue, play wait time. Okay. 
and because you may want to turn these on and off. So at the application level, these are parameters that can be changed. And so if the Boolean play wait time is true, then do the following. Go, go to the estimated wait time and um, uh, find out how many seconds. And what's going to happen is you're going to end up calling a, a subroutine if the value of seconds is greater than zero. Uh, and if you look at the properties here, you'll find that it calls the subflow and at the same time it establishes certain uh, parameters that we're going to pass from this script to the um, subflow. And I don't know, it's taking a second here to come up, but you'll see it. So here you can see that uh, the subflow obviously has to be previously created. I'll show you that in a moment. The input mappings are we have we're going to send over there a value called uh, estimated wait time in seconds. And we're going to stuff it in the subflow into an integer called estimated wait time in. Again, I like to, when I'm working with subflows, know my ins and my outs. And then the output, it's going to send back, first of all, it's going to say, uh, that the, the Boolean out value back to the calling script was either a success or a failure, and I can take action accordingly. If it's a success, I probably got the prompt estimated wait time uh, passed back to me. So that's what's going to happen. Over here, the actual script for um, estimated wait time is uh, the, the, the subflow, the flow that we um, call on is nothing more than a simple script that it does some uh, string manipulations and mathematical operations to convert the number of seconds um, into seconds, minutes, and hours. And that's all it does here. It's, uh, it's not rocket science. Uh, those of you who are familiar with string manipulation expressions in MySQL, uh, and math functions. These are straightforward, no, no rocket science here. Uh, and, and it concatenates the result and sends it back and it also sets the Boolean value as true. So I'll run you through this uh, quickly through the debugger and you'll see how that might work and how it might sound. The debugger running is going to fire a phone call off into, into the system. So I have set my debug value to uh, true. So that when the call runs in, let me go ahead and answer this. I'm going to accept this. Um, do the normal pause for call setup. So if you don't, um, nothing bad will happen if you don't do this. But what, what we want to do here is just give the system some time to set the call up. If you come into it too early, the caller may hear some chopped expressions if you have text, uh, excuse me, prompts at the beginning. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing, um, I'm looking at my Boolean debug mode. Um, and when I'm testing, it's such a pain in the neck sometimes to go through 67 steps to get to the part uh, that I'm working with, which is invariably stuff you're doing if an agent is queued, excuse me, if a caller is queued. So what I want to do here is set my debug to true and then just jump. What I do here in this particular case is just go directly to the queue. So that's what's going to happen here. Uh, we're in the test mode, go to the queue loop. Um, I didn't even bother to select the resource because what we're testing here is in the queue loop. Uh, I'll just go ahead and move this up so you can see it. And at this point, um, now Boolean play, it, this again is a value set at the application layer uh, that enables me to turn this feature on and off, right? So right now I have it turned on. And let's just go through this. You'll see it's going to get the estimated uh, wait time. Now for testing purposes, I went ahead and hard coded that so I, I don't have to mess around with it. All I have to do is remember to take this out before I put it in production. Um, and then what's going to happen is it'll do the test to make sure that the estimated wait time in seconds is greater than zero. 
and now it's going to call the subflow. And again, the subflow, the only thing it does is convert seconds to um, seconds, minutes, and hours, and also send back a success, a Boolean success. So um, obviously, if there were a problem, I don't want the script to crash. So if I don't get a Boolean success back, I go here and I play a can game. Hopefully, this will be successful. Yes. So let's go ahead and concatenate this and then speak it. Your expected wait time is one minute. 30 seconds. Okay, so now uh, I also have a version of this that I call play cue position. And how this works is it not only goes and gets the cue position, but it also does the, uh, um, it also plays the expected wait time. So you wouldn't turn both of these on. You turn one or the other on, depending on how your supervisors in the contact center want things handled. So you can hear this twice. In this case, we're going to get the Q position, OK? And the Q position. Uh, and again, for testing purposes, I hard coded it at 3, just so that we could test our code and test our subroutines and our prompts. We're going to concatenate the prompt now. Uh, which includes the previous prompt, and at this point, uh, we'll go ahead and... Your expected wait time is 1 minute 30 seconds. Your position in queue is 3rd. Okay, and so that's it. And at this point, uh, we continue along. So, uh, I think the script will be available on the website. Uh, I hope you have found this informative. And I thank you for viewing.